Hello, welcome to Unit 3 of Bootstrap World. So let's see where we've been. So in the last unit, we learned about contracts, which programmers use to talk about functions. A contract has three parts, the name, the domain, and range of a function. The domain of a function is the data that the function expects, and the range of a function is the data that the function produces. You also practiced writing contracts for many different types of functions, including those with domains and ranges that include different types of data, like numbers, strings, and even images. Today we'll talk about defining variables. So far, you've seen circles of evaluation, learned about contracts, and experimented with multiple data types. Make sure you remember what each of those are, and look back at the previous lesson for a refresher if you need to. Can you think of three functions that draw shapes? So you learned several. See if you can write their contracts without needing to look back at your contracts page. So just in your video notebook for this week, um, pause the video and see if you can write the contracts for three different um, functions that draw shapes right now. Okay, good. Um, here's some other questions to think about. Um, do you know what type of data is always surrounded in quotes? And I'll tell you that, so think about the answer for that, and then I will tell you. So that's strings. A string is a type of data that's always surrounded in quotes. What are the coordinates for the bottom left-hand corner of the screen? So do you remember in the coordinate system we've been using, the bottom left-hand corner is 0, 0. And the top right, let's see is 640 by 480. Suppose we had an image that had 50 identical solid red triangles. So think about that. You know how to make one solid red triangle. Now think about how you'd make 50. You'd have to write the, 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 this, this command right here, triangle 50 solid red, 50 times. To make things worse, um, if you wanted to change that, then you'd have to write, you'd have to make the change in all 50 expressions. So good programmers know that their their effort is better spent doing other things. So you, um, the we make sure that programming languages have a way to avoid repetition. Um, you so you write something difficult, you something once, and define it as a shortcut in the language, and then we use the shortcut whenever you want. And we saw this in Python too. Um, how to define variables. So in our language, we use the word define to define a variable. So here's an example of a definition. It defines shape one to be a solid red triangle. So here's shape one. Here is the, the expression that makes a triangle. And we're defining shape one to be this expression. So I'm going to um, Let's run that. Let's see if I can remember. So it's a solid red triangle. So define shape one, and it was a triangle fifty solid. Oops, and I have a typo. Solid. Okay, now that didn't make a triangle, right? It just, it's defined this shape one to be this expression. So that's the only execution when I hit enter. All it did was make that definition. All right, so now let's see what happens if I type in shape one. There's my red triangle. So remember, so shape one executed the definition. Define associated this expression with the word shape one. So it made a shortcut instead of typing this 
triangle 50 solid red, now I can just type shape 1. So let's see, this we want to do a different example. So they said, let's put that in the definitions area. Okay. And then let's add a new one called shape 2 that's going to be solid blue 20. There's 20. Solid blue. And we want to make that called shape 2. Okay. Let's click run. All right, so that loaded my definitions. Now let's call shape two. Yep, there's a smaller blue triangle. On the next line, define a new value called age to be the number of years old that you are. All right, define, define age 49. And so, you know, a number is just an expression for itself, so that should be okay um, to define age. Define a value called name to be a string that represents your name. So each time, and I was clicking run after each one of those, the computer reads all the definitions and adds them to the language. So really, when we're using define, we're actually defining new words in our computer language. So if a definition is changed, the computer will use the previous definition until the next time run is clicked, right? And we know that. Uh, let's see, this name. Oh, I guess so. I guess we'd already used name, so I'm going to do that. So nothing happens. Um, so even if I change this text here, it doesn't really affect anything in my environment until I hit run. Let's see if it complains. So it didn't complain that time. I can say name one. I can say shape. All right, so let's look at some more. On a new line in the definitions area, define a value called eye color to be the color of your eyes. Don't hit run. Okay, don't hit run. All right, now, so I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to evaluate eye color. Right? And that variable is not defined. Even though I wrote it up here, it's not defined because I haven't hit run yet. Alright, now let's hit run. And just like it told us, um, it's going to reevaluate everything up here. So all of these definitions are now added to our language that we can use down here. And I should be able to say eye color. Get breakfast during brown. Definitions are useful because we can use reuse them in other expressions. So um, they they gave an example here. If I could make circle, ten solid eye color. So eye color I can now use here as a color. All right, I'm going to do these. Uh, I'll demonstrate all these too. All right, let's see. Find a value called price to be a solid yellow star. Okay. Solid yellow star. Let's see. Uh, star. No. If I need to give it a number of points or not. But it'll tell me, I think, if I do. And we don't have to hit run every time I type a line. I could type in a bunch of lines. I mean, in fact, that's all that you do that. But I'm going to check star uh, price first. Okay, that worked. 
All right, so you do that one, and then go ahead and pause the video, and I'll leave these instructions up. So pause the video, and you follow these instructions um, in your interactions area. So we'll use you. You'll type it into the interactions area up here, and hit run, and then evaluate the different things that you're going to make. So pause and do that now. Great, so now you know a lot about defining uh, variables in uh, our racket language. So now let's look um, at doing the same thing in algebra, in, so in mathematics or algebra notation. So in our programming language, we define like this. Um, so in this one, x is just the number 4. In this one, y is the result of the expression uh, addition for a plus 4 and 9. And then we can use that uh, in a, another row. So define z is multiplication of x, which was defined here, times 2. So x is 4, so we put plug that in. So z becomes then 4 times 2, which is 8. So the values can be fixed. They can be the result of an expression or they can be defined in terms of other variables, just like this third one. And the same things we can do in algebra. And we just say x equals 4. So in, in algebra notation, in mathematical notation, equals is an assignment operator assigned to a variable. And we use the same term, variable. And equals is the assignment. So x equals 4 means that x is going to be assigned um, the value of 4. In this one, the variable y is assigned the value of 4 plus 9. And in this one, the variable z is assigned the value of the variable x times 2. In your um, video notebook, type in the racket, note, the racket definition, you know, so using define, just like you just did on your on your, your um, Dr. Racket, but do this in your video notebook um, to convert these algebra definitions into racket definitions. So pause and do that now. Okay. All right, now, um, some more practice. Turn to page 38 in your workbook, and you'll see a bunch of value definitions written in code. So convert that code into math notation. So that's just the top part of that page 38. Um, you'll see two sections. You see two sections there. Uh, one that has the definitions written in code, and the other has it definitions written in math. Just do the top part that says that takes the definitions written in code and convert those into math notation. Um, and then that's all we have for today. Um, and in the next lesson. We'll learn to um, add definition, use those definitions that we just used in Rocket Language to add images to a video game. Goodbye.